to order. Everyone take their seats, please. We can stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Why? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, so the purpose of tonight's meeting is for a public hearing uh, to get information out and discuss the purchase of the town of Haddam, purchasing Haddam Elementary School um, in the area around that, about 10 acres, uh, for $450,000, and that will be going to referendum on June 4th. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask the town attorney to come up and give us some background information on how the number was arrived at $450,000 and some background of what occurred with the Board of Education. And then from there, our town planner, Bill Warner, has a presentation um, to share some ideas of what things that can be done with the property. So I'm gonna start off with Rich, and when they're done with their presentations, we'll take questions. Good evening, uh, I'm Rich Carrello, I'm the town attorney. Uh, some of you might have heard this already. I think I'm just going to start at the beginning. Uh, for those of you who might not have had the history of this, I'm pretty sure a lot of this uh, might just repeat, be repeating what you've already known, but it's easy to start at the beginning. When, when the regional school district decided to close the programs at Haddam Elementary School, they were left with the property, and it's up to them to decide how to dispose of it. And there was a lot of discussion at the time as to whether or not the town of Haddam had any rights to acquire the property and, and how that would take place. Um, there was um, the town, uh, the, uh, the, the regional school district attorney and I had several conversations about how, you know, how that might take place and, and what the, the law was about that. We looked at the title to the property and if there were any restrictions on its transfer, there were none. Uh, we looked at the regional school district uh, bylaws and state statutes about regional school districts and about if there were any requirements for them to transfer it back to the town. Uh, there were none. Uh, we finally found a uh, resolution from 1972 that talked about the regional school district's desire, their resolution, to transfer back to the towns of Killingworth and Haddam properties that were transferred into the district at, at the time um, by way of a, a right of first refusal. That's pretty much what it said. Didn't give any parameters as to what that would look like, didn't talk about any dollars or, or, or any structure to that, just the desire on the part of the regional school district that said if they were to dispose of the property, they would give the right of first refusal to the towns of Killingworth and Haddam. So that, that led to a meeting with the regional school district and the town, and both the town of Haddam and Killingworth, um, back in March to discuss what that might look like. We have 155 acres of property here between the school building itself and what we call Swan Hill in the back. And there were discussions at that time about how, how is this going to transpire? Does the town want to acquire the property? What would be the terms upon which the town would acquire the property? Um, did it mean just the, the school building and some surrounding property? Did it mean the Swan Hill piece? Um, would there be any conservation restrictions on the Swan Hill piece? Things like that. And at that meeting, the regional school district kind of put it back onto the attorneys and said, you guys figure out the process by which this is all gonna play out. The regional school district attorney, myself, started having some conversations and we uh, started going down a path of trying to figure out how to divide up the property what uh, also at that regional school district meeting they talked about donating swan hill to the town and, and possibly the Haddam land trust we talked about how that was going to take place and um, at that time the killingworth town attorney and the, the first selectman of killingworth started to express their concerns about the financial aspects of this and they brought to light some historic facts as to how the town of killingworth had to pay the regional school district for a purchase of property back to them uh, back in the 80s and how they had to pay over time back when the regional school district was formed a disproportionate amount because Haddam had donated more land and property to the school district than killing with that and they were concerned that 
based on the conversation that had occurred at the Board of Ed meeting that night, that the Board of Ed would just donate all of the land and properties back to Haddam and it would be a financial detriment to Killing. So they started to weigh in about their desire to make sure that the town of Haddam paid something for these properties. That led to a further discussion with Liz and myself, the first selectman of Killingworth and their town attorney, the chairman of the Board of Ed and the, the Board of Ed attorney, to really try to figure out what we were talking about here. Because ultimately, it's up to you to decide whether or not this makes sense. And so we said to the Board of Ed, you tell us what the terms are. Because we can't go back and forth to the townspeople saying, are we going to pay a dollar for it? Are we going to pay $600,000 for it? Is there something in the middle? Is it all of it? Is it part of it? We laid out to them what the town wanted at the time and based on the Board of Selectmen meeting saying the following. We want the Swan uh, Hill portion to be donated to the land trust. And we'd be willing to purchase the remaining acreage for a dollar amount that made sense, that was fair. Killingworth was saying that they wanted had them to pay $650,000 because that's what the RFP had set forth. Uh, we said no, uh, we wanted the donation of the land, but we'd be willing to pay something. You guys come to us with a dollar amount and we'll put it before the voters to decide. So that's essentially how we got to the 450 that you see in the notice. The proposal from RAC, which was part of the RFP process that the regional school district put out there, he proposed $450,000 for the building and the 10 acres around it, and uh, another $200,000 for the Swan Hill. We were able to negotiate the transfer of the Swan Hill to the land trust for a dollar. Killingworth was okay with that and didn't demand more money because they know that it would be open to the public for open space land and walking trails, and, and essentially the public would have the benefit of that. The remaining 10 acres around the school <coughs> Um, was carved out, and uh, that's what's before you tonight. And that's how we got to the 450. Um, I think that's it. Any questions? I don't think there's anything else. No. That's essentially how we got to where we are today. Um, what's before you at the referendum will be essentially what you see in the notice. Uh, the proposal by the regional school district is to have the town acquire the 10 acres around the, the school building. Uh, for $450,000 that would be paid as part of the, the school budget starting next year for three consecutive years, $150,000 a year for three years. Okay. Thank you, Lori. Uh, good, good evening. My name is Bill Warner. I'm your new town planner. I got here in in January, January 15th. I'm not new to this, uh, to this, to this business. I've been in, in doing it for 30 years. I was the director of planning and development in Middletown for 25 years and the uh, town planner in Farmington for five years before coming to here to Hatton. Um, my job tonight is really to, to kind of provide you with information to make an, an educated decision. The best decision is an educated and informed decision. So that's what I'm here tonight to talk about. Um, I have a lot of experience acquiring and repurposing buildings in Middletown. We did a lot of a lot of that there. Um, so I've looked at this and I've given, this is basically my professional opinion which I then presented to the Planning and Zoning Commission and they also agreed with that. Um, so I'm going to give you some of the facts about the property, how we're going to divide the property so that the Haddam and Land Trust gets their piece and then the 10 acres is left, left behind. Um, and then a, an analysis of possible scenarios. Next slide. Um, arrow down. Arrow. Next. Next. As Rich indicated, it's 155 acres. Um, it's a it's a large piece of pro piece of property. It's all one property. It includes the school. It includes the dog pound, and it includes the walking trails that you all know as Swan Hill. Beautiful piece of property. Views from the Connecticut River, um, and of course the school property. Next slide. 
a lot of people consider it two properties because it really does act as two properties. As you can see, the um, I like to point. Um, as you can see, the 145 acres up here is the Swan Hill area. By the top topographic lines, it's very undulating, rocky. Um, it's, a, it's a great piece of open space. So it's a good open space piece. And then there's a large wetland between the Swan Hill property and the school down here. This is Saber Road associated with Bible Rock Brook that really divides the two properties into two, into two properties. Next slide. The school property, so this is the HES parcel, so now we're going to focus pr primarily on the HES parcel. So the Swan Hill area is up there, this is the big wetland in here, and then this is the school property. We know the school has a 6,000 gallon septic tank, we know it has been tested for a reserve area, we know it has an acre and a half of playground and parking lot in the front, and we know it has down below another acre of a former, former play, play, play fields. Next slide. Existing zoning is, is very relevant to know what is allowed there. The zoning, there's two, two, two basically uses, uses that are allowed by, by right and uses that are allowed by special exception. The uses allowed by right really, really don't apply. They're pretty much what you do in a single family home. The special permit uses are, are the ones that are, are, are most relevant. Special permit uses, if it meets all the requirements, the Planning and Zoning Commission has to approve it. So I point these out because if the town doesn't own it and doesn't control the property, these are the things that are permitted there, that absolutely can go on this property. I highlighted in red the ones that I think are most relevant. Churches, schools, housing for elderly and physical, hand, physical handicapped persons, nursing home, convalescent homes, child and daycare centers, private schools, veterinary hospitals, and artists, galleries, and art studios and classrooms. Uh, so those are, those are by special permit, they have to go to Planning and Zoning Commission, but if it meets all the requirements in the zoning code, which it certainly can, they have to be approved. I point those out because a church, a church, you know, a church, synagogue, mosque, whatever, whatever it is, is an important part of a neighborhood, an important part of society, but to, from a town point of view, we're so dependent on, on property taxes, it's tax exempt, so we won't be getting any taxes from that use. Housing for elderly and physically handicapped, affordable housing is another one that is allowed under Connecticut General Statutes 8-30G. We don't really have any control over that. That's another one that if we don't control it, could happen there. And then private schools, of course, many private schools are also tax exempt. Next slide. Building operation costs and anticipated capital costs, these were provided by RSD 17. Next slide. They gave us these two spreadsheets of the oil uses and electricity uses. This is the primary cost to keep the building running. Uh, next slide. So I took everything they gave us and summarized it. Pumping the septic tank is 18 cents a gallon. Well maintenance is $3,100 a year for two service, services and filter change. Doesn't include water testing. Water testing is much more frequent because it's a school. You wouldn't have to test it as much for other uses. Heating oil, they use 22. 22,500 gallons last year. Uh, that came to $43,000. Electricity, 230 kilowatt hours, which is $44,000, $44,700. For a total of, to run it as a school every year, 92,423. That's to run it as a school. So obviously, if the town acquires it and is working on trying to repurpose it and come with a new use, it is not going to be using as much electricity, using as much oil. We're obviously going to lower lower the, the temperature if it's vacant. We're not going to keep it at a 68. We're going to keep it probably at 50 or 55. The, the computers, the lights are not going to be running the way they're running out of school. Looking at the at the spreadsheet, you see the spreadsheet. You see they, they must have. I don't know because I'm not. I haven't been here. Um, they must have summer programs or something based on the electricity usage. There seems to be a lot going on throughout the year. So I just figured, you know, reduction for a vacant building, for a vacant building, who really knows? 20% uh, reduction, 30% reduction, 40% reduction, and 50% reduction. So I, I went with the 40% reduction, which would be about $55,000 a year to keep the building basically heated and shuttered, I guess would be a good term for it. Next slide. These again are from RSD 17, anticipated capital costs. They certainly do a good job maintaining their buildings. Category one, 
is years one through three, category two is four through seven, and um, category four is eight through ten or something like that. It's a seven year, ten year plan or something like that. Um, the one that concerns me the most that we need to look into is the roof. They have roof improvements, so we have to know what, what we're buying in terms of the roof. Is it, does it really need a roof, or are they just doing routine maintenance? They do an annual inspection of the roof every year, so we're going to get that annual inspection to understand what it is. We don't want to buy a building and, and you know, a month later realize, oh, geez, we've got to put in a $200,000 roof. Uh, so these are their capital expenses, and I'm sure they program them all for, for planning purposes for all their schools. So they're probably pretty, pretty conservative in what they do. Next slide. The division of the property. As we talked about, the Haddam Land Trust is going to get the 145 acres. That's pretty much a done deal. Everybody has agreed to that. So the property has to be divided. Uh, so the next slide. We had our, our surveyor working with Jacobson. Jacobson has their own surveyors. Jacobson's are our, our engineers, and they have a surveying crew. So they put together this is a compilation plan which shows the 145 acres that they have in Land Trust and the HES parcel. Next slide. This is the actual survey of the HES parcel. This survey was actually very easy to prepare because they're along Saybrook Road. There's highway monuments. Highway monuments here and here. Along this property line, there are pins with the Rossi property. So there are existing pins, so you know exactly where that property line is. And all we did is shoot a line that way and shoot a line that way to come to that point, which closed it in terms of this. But basically, the property line, it leaves the most developable land from a development point of view on this piece. The wetland is pretty much there, and then it goes up Swan Hill. It also allows for access from Saybrook Road, from the town green, to Swan Hill, from between the church and AGS. Next slide. So this is an aerial photograph showing the HES parcel that we're talking about, that we're going to start talking about, and whether the town should acquire it. As you can see, there's the school, Saybrook Road, that's fine. Uh, Saybrook Road, the school, looking down on it. Rossi property, Saybrook Road, school, playground, septic system. Next slide. So the big question, should the town acquire the HES parcel? Next slide. Before the town can acquire any property, they have to refer it for an opinion from the Planning and Zoning Commission. So the Planning and Zoning issue, issues what they call Connecticut General Statutes 8-24 report. So the Planning and Zoning Commission did that two weeks ago. We talked about it, we talked about what the issues are, and the Planning and Zoning Commission unanimously made a decision. Some of the things that we presented to the Planning and Zoning Commission, what is the best future use of the property? Would any of the permitted uses, after looking at the zoning, would any of the permitted uses add vitality to Higgins Center and a significant addition to the grand list? Would a tax-exempt use, like a place of uh, religious worship or private school, add to the vibrancy of the village? And we keep talking about the vibrancy of the village because the report is about, is the proposed sale and the acquisition by Haddam consistent with the plan of conservation and development, which we just did in 2018. And the plan of conservation development focuses very much on the revitalization of Higginham Center. So the question is, what, would the town acquiring this property help, help in some way to revitalize Higginham Center? And who would give it the most? So, so which ownership entity, the town or RC 17, would give, would give the proposed sale or at least the highest level of scrutiny, would have the greatest interest and concern for the economic vitality of Higginham Center, will focus its deliberations on consistency with the and implementation of the plan of conservation and development. We say that the highest level of scrutiny because when, when you have a build, let's say you have a building and let's say we, we choose not to acquire this property, so that the building's sitting there vacant and let's, let's say a church comes and says we would like to acquire the property from you, Board of Education strictly a Board of Education decision, and if they throw a big number out there, because it is a valuable piece of property, um, they're going to make that decision, not the town of Haddam. So after reviewing all that, uh, Planning and Zoning Commission, quoting from their letter, after reviewing all these considerations with its professional staff and the attached flowcharts, the Commission voted unanimously to recommend to the Board of Selectmen that the town of Haddam acquire Haddam Elementary School from RSD 17.
So that's the, that's your official elected planning and zoning commission. Next slide. Possible scenarios. These these get a little a little elaborate, but I wanted to, I wanted to go over and try and think of all the things that maybe could happen. Maybe we could cover all of them. So the next slide. So this one is if RSD 17 continues to own possible scenarios. In my opinion, the red is the red is the negative and the green is the positive. So the town so so beginning at the top, town has limited control over the future use if no zone zone change is required. So if those permitted uses that we talked about, if one of those came forward, the town has no real control over it. They present their plans to planning and zoning, pretty much have to approve it. Um, I'm going to talk about the soils the soils after this, these slides. Um, so the three scenarios, cannot find an end user, SIDS vacant, no tax dollars, no activity, RSD 17 budget, we would, the town would be paying roughly $32,000 of the 55 uh, to keep a, a vacant building sitting there. Um, so that's not a good scenario. Second one is sell the property. So the town or the RSD 17 could sell the property. Sale proceeds would go to RSD 17. They could sell it to a taxable entity, which would be positive because it would have apartments other apartments or other uses, new investment tax revenue would roughly be $100,000 a year, and it would be activity in the center. So that could be very positive if they followed that route, and if that route worked. And I would be remiss if I did not say that the RAC proposal exists, that they already did an RFP process, they have the RAC proposal. Uh, my analysis of that would have net approximately $500,000 a year, or $500,000 in 10 years after the abatements and roughly $100,000 per year thereafter. So that, so that would be positive. The town of Haddam certainly could use an extra $100,000 a year. But I also put the cafe on it is subject to. So it's subject to the town of Haddam approving a tax abatement, waiving the building permit fee, which is about $100,000, and uh, planning and zoning commission changing the zoning to allow standard market rate apartments. As we indicated with the permitted uses, the only apartments that are allowed is senior housing. That's not what RAC wants to do. So we need a zone change to allow for that. So that's on the positive side of RSD owning it, if they follow that route. Um, the sale of the property could go to a tax exempt organization, as I indicated, some type of private school, some type of um, church or something like that, church, private school. Sales revenue to RSD 17, so they get the, mo the money, no tax revenue, uh, no real benefit to the town, possibly some activity if it was something that created people walking into the center, but probably not very much. Um, they could lease the property. Lease payments would go to RSD 17, not to the town. They would retain control over the property, which I know a lot of you are concerned about in case they need it in the future. So that could be positive, um, but there would have to be absolutely no tax revenue either. So there'd be lease money going to the RSD 17, no tax revenue coming to the town. Uh, again, without making major renovations, so no one's going to lease it and make major renovations, so it would be something that could use it as is, church, private school, daycare center, something like that, um, may create some activity in the center. So the next slide is if the town wants it. So there's a lot more green um, to this one, because I just think it, it just, makes, it's just makes a lot of sense that the town control this. Um, so the town has complete control over the future use of it. You're the owner now. It's not up to planning and zoning how it's used. It's up to the board of selectmen. It's up to the, the, tech, the voters of the town of Haddam to decide what, how it's going to be used before it ever gets to the planning and zoning commission. So you have control over that. If a church comes and says we want to we buy it, we're sorry, you're a tax exempt organization. We, we want to sell it to a taxable property. If somebody else, if some, some developer says I want to come in and own you Section 8 housing or anything else that's been talked about, automatically say, no, we're sorry, we're not interested in doing that because you own it now makes a huge difference. Uh, again, I'll talk about the soils in a minute. Cannot find an end user, sits vacant, no tax dollars, no activity. Town budget is 55000 instead of 32000 because now you're paying the whole the whole lot. You're not paying part of it as you work with killing or paying the other part. Um, but again, trying to be positive about that, I, 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 it could be positive. It could be positive because what that does, if it's sitting there and we've gone through the traditional traditional RP process and haven't been able to find anybody, that is when innovation really starts to come to, to kick in. What if we did this? What if we did that? And you start to get more creative about it. And that's when the real successful uses occur. 
Um, I keep thinking about the town of Putnam, which is a good example. Putnam, 15 years ago, was a, was a completely vacant downtown. And then one guy came in and wanted to take advantage. Putnam is in the northeast corner, a very depressed area of Connecticut. One guy came in and said, you know, he wanted to take advantage of this old department store that was, that was uh, inexpensive. And he opened, he came from New York, and he opened uh, an antique marketplace. And next thing you know, somebody else opened a marketplace. Now there's over 25 antique stores in downtown Putnam. And then when you have that kind of activity, then you have somebody opens a coffee shop, somebody opens a restaurant, and it all just takes off. And that's, those are the kind of uses that, that are non-traditional. You have entrepreneurs that say, oh, we could do this, we could do that. We have people in this town that talk about maker spaces and building boats and all that kind of stuff, all that kind of, those kind of ideas that came out of the Scoville Ho hearings, where there was a lot of people talking about doing stuff like that. So, so I wouldn't be afraid of that because it creates creativity. And I think among the town of Haddam is when you could be creative about what you do with your asset. The other way to do it would be to sell the property, so revenue from the sale. So you could sell it, the town could get like, revenue from the sale, hopefully more than $450,000, and we make a nice profit. You could sell it to a taxable entity uh, for apartment. The most logical one I keep saying is apartments because we have market studies that say apartments, there's a market for apartments for people that, for people that want to stay in town. So there is a market for that, it's been identified. The market studies identified a market for 180 units across the town of basically rental apartments. So there is a market for it. Um, new investment, it would have to be a significant investment to convert. Uh, our building inspector is here, and Gary and I talked about how much it would cost to convert to a, a school, to a residential facility, roughly 150 to $200 a square foot. It's a 3,000, 30,000 square foot building. So you know, you're talking about a $4 million investment that would have to go into the building, and then that would become taxable. Personal property, every, everybody and everybody that has a, a rent in the apartment would have cars, that would be taxable and it would create activity in the center um, of people going into the center. We could sell it to a tax exempt organization. There's been some talk about various schools and colleges that might be interested in it. Um, most recently, I think Mark Longren talked about a, 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 an engineering school with the Pratt and Whitney. Um, certainly a, a, a demand for that type of school. Um, so a tax exempt one, yes, the town could do that. Yes, the town would give up the tax revenues, but it would be a very high bar and it would be your decision. It wouldn't be RSD 17 making the decision, it would be you making the decision, the taxpayers have had them, saying, okay, we understand we're not going to get taxes, but these are all the reasons why we think it's good for the town to have them. Could lease the property, which could be the biggest home run. The town retains control of the property. Um, you don't receive any tax revenues, but the lease payments to, are to the town. Even at $5 a square foot, that's $150,000 a year. That's more than your taxes. That's why many people always lease. They don't sell. Um, church, private school, daycare. And you'd have to really evaluate it to start to understand how is it going to create activity in the center? Because that, that, that's something that you really want to do. You don't want to just have something that is isolated right there on the hill in the school. You want something that spills out and creates more vibrancy in the center. Next slide. So as I said, if, if RSC 17 controls the property and keeps ownership of it, we would have no control over the soils. Um, if we buy it, we would have control over the soils. This is really starting to think out of the box and, and to start to say, okay, let's, let's really plan for the future. How could we really start to create something that really adds to Haddam and Higginham Center? Um, the biggest impediment to growth in Higginham Center is pseudo unsuitable soils for septic. If you think about Higginham and you think about the three brooks that come in and, and converge, um, Prior to the Industrial Revolution, and if you look at how it's laid out, we know the Rossi property is all industrial fill. We know the town garage property has about seven feet of industrial fill. And I would be willing to say, if you look down 81, how nice and flat it is, that was all probably part of the floodplain in the wetland that was filled over the years of industrial fill. Industrial fill is not good for septic systems, and that is why we have the problem that we have, is because the septic system, you can't get a septic system there. So the Citizens Bank building, for example, 
is sadly probably going to sit for a long time unless it turns into some type of other office, not a high water user. So you can't have restaurants, can't have apartments, can't have anything without a good septic system. So restaurants, apartments, other high water users cannot locate in much, much of the center. The Rossi property, Citizens Bank, Town Garage, Long Route 81, pretty much all bad soils. Makes it very, very, very challenging. Um, the places that I've come have always had public sewer, so this, this is one of the biggest challenges of, of being here in, here in Hatt. Um, town has spent 20 years being in Middletown. I read it in the Middletown Press. And they were always studying about sewers in, in Haddam and Higgum. In Higgum. Um, 20 years studying the public sewer system. The only thing that has happened is the costs have increased. So every year, construction costs go up. People, they, they calculate a 4% inflation rate, but that's probably very conservative. Um, so that, that's the big problem. The two, I took the 2012 estimate of 6.6 .6 million for a package treatment plan and brought it up at 4% a year, so you're right around $10 million. So that would be the town of Haddam voting to allow sewer, to create a sewer system to service that little Higginham Center at $10 million. There's also an annual operating cost because if you have one of these packaged treatment plants, you have to hire a licensed operator. That's about an $80,000 a year job. Um, and then there's materials and equipment and supplies and everything else. So this, the, the idea of a sanitary sewer system is very, very challenging. Very challenging. But we also want to see something happen. Let's say, let's say we have, we've been talking to a lot of different restaurants and things. Um, so we want to have a couple good restaurants. Just a couple of restaurants that would really start to kick things off. Um, but right now we can't have it. So we need to be creative, think outside of the box. The town green and the HES, HES property could unlock Higgins' potential. Next slide. Again, this is the property, Saybrook Road. This is the school. That's the big wetland in the back. Number one is the existing septic system in Leachfield of 6,000 gallons. Uh, and 6,000 gallons is a significant septic system. To give you an idea, for, for, resident, for residential, you figure 150 gallons per, per bedroom coming out of a bedroom. So 150 gallons, that equates to about 40 units that could fit in that septic system. Uh, for a restaurant, it's 35 gallons per seat. So that's a lot of seats with a 6,000 gallon system. Um, number two is another area that was tested for the reserve, which is required, but that reserve can also support a 6,000 gallon system. So number one and number two, have been tested. Is, one is, is the existing system, two has been tested as the reserve system. We also tested in 2018 as part of the Scoville Hill project, Scoville Mill project, the uh, town green. So number three is the town green, and that was tested and actually designed for a 7,000 gallon system. Um, the, and tested in 2003, we tested all those areas, and they are all great sand and gravel. So based on the topography and the testing, the school is sitting on a natural mound of sand and gravel. Our, our sanitarian's words, Ryan, were, couldn't ask for any better. So, because in 2000, last, two weeks ago, last week, last week we dug a hole at the playground, and they went down 10 feet, pure sand and gravel, no groundwater, no ledge, couldn't ask for any better. So, so that's very positive. Um, so when you put all that together, I'm not going to go into the details of 7,500 gallons versus D, the DEP system over over 10,000 over 7,500 gallons, but we have one of the our Jacobson engineers has an engineer working for them, Brian Curtis, who is by far one of the best sanitary engineers in the state. The DEP actually hired him to do the regulations, so we have him on working with us. So it's very so he's he's talked about it. I've talked about it with our our health district. They all kind of get what I'm saying is that this could be an area that could service new businesses in Higginham Center. So it's another really important reason to control this property. So let's say you know we have some great restaurant that wants to go to, to go to Citizens Bank. And you know it's very positive. And so so we really want it. Everybody here says yes we want it. 
So we would have to, could we figure out a way, probably starting with number two, to force main their flow up to their meter it, just like any other utility. So they're paying for it, we're not giving them a free ride. But meter it up to number, number two, move the reserve for number one, and, and start to get creative about that, and start to say, okay, this is how these things could work. Just start bringing in businesses that need, and businesses and apartments that need water, and are heavy water users. Next slide. So the conclusion. Um, cost of acquisition is well worth the control it buys. In my opinion, planning and zoning commissions, I, I did. The, the, the magic word here is control. So we, we would control this property. Planning and zoning agrees. Um, I agree that the cost of acquisition, especially spread out over three years, is well worth the control it buys. 450000 is a small amount to pay to control for a $4.4 million asset. So this is this property by our the Reval company that did it in 2015 put a value on this of 4.4 million dollars. It's a significant building with significant value. Um, so if it's used for a school or used to use as is, it has that value. So that's very very significant, and you're paying 450 for it. Um, control the future use. Avoid tax exempt and focus on uses which bring positive activity to the center. That's those are the the benchmarks, I would think, from a town's perspective, okay, how much tax revenue are we going to get? How much activity is it going to bring to the center? Is it going to generate other growth and other tax revenue with other new development that occurs? Because the more activity you have, the more growth you have. And up until this point, we'd be able to say, yeah, but we can't have growth because we don't have, we don't have any good soils. This could be the way to have good soils. Who decides? My opinion, if it was that I'm from Middlefield, if this was happening in Middlefield, I would say I don't want Durham voting on what's going to happen to our school. Um, so, same as Haddam. I think Haddam should exclusively, the decision should be exclusively the town of Haddam of what you want to happen to, the, to this property. It's one of the biggest properties in your town. It's certainly one of the biggest buildings in your town. Extensive public input. RSD 17 owns it. RSD 17 decides. Plain and simple. So if RSD 17 wants to lease it to a private school, they lease it to a private school. That's it. If it's town owned, not because we're promising you this, it's because it's what your charter says, planning and zoning in the state statutes, planning and zoning commission, board of selectmen, town meeting, potentially a referendum, all those things have to happen to decide this is how it's going to be used. So it's really extensive public input and public really really educating people about why we want to use it for this proposed use if the town owns it. Control future disposition, whether you sell it, whether you lease it, whether you retain it, that's all a future decision that would be made if you owned it. Lease revenue, sale revenue, tax revenue, it's all all very, very relevant, all relevant for a town that is uh, that is dependent on the property tax. Controlling underlying soils and the uses, use the soils to unlock Higginum's true potential. And next slide. That's all I got. Questions and comments? Yes. Okay. They had to bring bubblers in. So I, okay. Are they drinking the water now? Yes. 
Yeah, I, yeah. Like I, like I said, I can't think of anything that should have a higher standard than an elementary school. So. There is a radon system in there, I think they did that a few okay. years ago. Yeah, radon is all just venting out. May I ask what the access to the north of the school to the back property, isn't that a ravine right there? It is. Um, I, I've walked it. It's. I, I would say it's doable. I, in, in Middlefield, I just bought nine acres, and I've been building a trail up Besic Mountain, so I have been looking at the blisters to prove it. Uh, so, so yeah. I mean, it, it's definitely doable for a hiking trip. And like I said, that that really. We talked about reserving parking for it and everything else, but the reality is we want people to park at the green, to park down in Higginham Center, and to walk up and go for their hike. So that ideally they'll come down and they'll stop at Da Vinci to, to buy a soda or a grinder or some, something like that. So we want to force that pedestrian activity rather than providing a parking spot, park, go hike, and then go home. That's the logic behind it. Yeah, I just want to thank you, Bill, for your wonderful presentation. You touched on all the points uh, I think that are important for this property. One other idea that uh, has been brought up, and you know, an architect from town kind of mapped it out, is uh, we have to find some place to put our public works garage. And on the back corner of that 10 acres, uh, we could actually fit a public works garage that's double the size of the existing one um, and actually have access to the Tebow Road. Um, so that's another uh, idea that we can look at, I think, that the town should, should look at. We currently pay $40,000 leasing a building to, from a Rossi company for our trucks. That alone, we can just build a building on the back of that um, and we, at least put our trucks there until we find a better uh, home for our public works project. So that's one I guess. A question on that? That yeah. would be if the town owned the property? Yes. Or so I mean, the, yeah. yeah. If so the town then you take off that property. Yeah. So if the town purchases, we can slice and dice this any way everybody wants. The key is six members of PADM, Board of Ed, are making the decisions for 8,000 people in town versus, and five from Killingworth. As Bill said, I, you know, Killingworth making the decisions for what happens to one of the largest building, actually, the largest property in the center of our town is a little bit off. Um, some other ideas, if we keep it and use the building, there, you know, like he's had them did, put everything under one roof, lease our other buildings uh, that we currently have. Uh, doctor's office, architects, engineering firm. Um, we have the Haddon Museum and the Veterans Museum are busting at the seams. Those are some great museums. We have a Haddon Museum in that school. Uh, and they have bring in, I know the house that Youth and Family Services is in and the HKA Park and Rec, a, a recreation authority, is pretty dilapidated. And I know they were talking about having a problem with that building. So there's another use for it. But all of this stems from the town of Haddam residents making the decision and taking control of the uh, process. No revenue comes in. I'm late getting in on this, but if I understand that this property is we get the town buys for 450 grand lump sum at 50 grand for closing costs, that's 500,000. Population is 8,000 people. Every first thing here costs up 55 bucks. You can buy the property. Then we're burdened a little bit further down the line to carry it and maintain it. So at least we have control for 65 bucks a person in this town. We're crazy. I'll chip in 65. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. I have a, a 45 year association with the town as a teacher, a coach, a parent, a resident, and my first preference would be to oppose restructuring and to keep this as a school. Now, I don't know if that's realistic or not. Uh, my, our three kids had the good fortune of attending Haddon Elementary kindergarten through sixth grade, and it was a wonderful experience, and I hate to see that gone. I also am told that uh, you, if you redirect the fourth grades from Killingworth and have them up to the new middle school, you will now be within 46 people of building capacity there. How long does it take to get 46 more students? The answer is not long at all. And then what? 
We got to build a new school. We price those out, eighty to one hundred million dollars. This is an asset I think the town must retain. My preference would be to elect a bunch of people who have the backbone to stand up to the superintendent and not get involved in hero worship, and not get involved in hero worship, but represent the people of this town and not send fourth graders, which I think as a former educator is a bad idea, to send them up into uh, the middle school. But if that's not going to happen, I still say this town should acquire this property. Yeah, I'm not into, you know, selling something that's an asset like this for 12% of its appraised value. That's a bad idea. And, you know, you did a great job in outlining the uh, possibilities uh, that exist there to help. I mean, look at Higginham Center. You've got all of these empty buildings down there. And, you know, do we want that to continue? The old hutch, the Citizens Bank, that yellow building that occasionally becomes headquarters for the Republicans. You know, that's empty. And why? Because there's no way to get you know, adequate septic systems in there or a sewer. So I think we need to take control of it. As I say, my preference would be to keep it as a school because at some point, maybe eight to 10 years down the road, the, you know, the, the vicissitudes of population growth change and all of a sudden you gotta have another school. If you let some guy go in there and put 46 apartments, you're gonna quickly get a whole bunch more kids that will have to attend school. So I thank you for your presentation. I strongly believe that this town should maintain control of this wonderful asset. That's my opinion.
at a cost of $15 million. Mm. $15 million. It sat vacant for years. A lot of damage was done because you think you're going to leave the heat on at 50 degrees. It was vandalized. If there's not life in a building, things go to hell. So just keep that in mind. Yeah, that's definitely definitely a concern, and you know, I mean, the first thing we have to do if we do acquire it is, is 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 learn about it, is work with IRC 17, the, the building maintenance people, to understand what needs to be done, to really understand it. I mean, I, I had an example, I and mean, uh, a far far more extre extreme. For 12 years, I was essentially the owner, property manager for Middletown of the 184,000 square foot Remington Rand property in, in the north end of Middletown. Um, when we took that over, again, it was taking control because it was tax delinquent for years. Um, but every illicit activity in the world was going on there. We had to tow a car, we had to figure all that out. So yes, it's, that's the first thing to do is to understand what it is and then start talking to people. I mean, like, like I've said, I've talked to a lot of businesses um, through my association with Middleton probably, um, restaurants down up there and stuff that, are in, that would be interested in coming down because it, it is fairly convenient off a of route nine. It is on Saybrook Road. Big advantage is the traffic on Saybrook Road. So you got about six to eight thousand cars on Saybrook Road. Um, high visibility and, and a great septic system. So you know you can really start to think about what what it is and hope it doesn't just sit vacant. Good no. question. Um, the building obviously was wondering: is there any um, you know some of these floor tiles have asbestos and it was built during a time where they used lead paints, right? Is that, has that been checked into us? We would have to, we would have to investigate all that, but like I said, I, I know for a fact that they have to do extensive environmental testing in elementary school, so if there was asbestos house, I'm sure they, they had to remove it. I know they did that in the middle field. You have the same thing, there was asbestos, and there was mold problems, and well, that was a school with asbestos in Yeah, yeah, no, no doubt about it. And, and asbestos is, you know, asbestos tiles are, are they're there, they're made of asbestos, but if you're not breathing in, asbestos isn't dangerous. So, so there are some things that are safe. You, know, you can have a lead safe building, certainly in elementary school, I'm sure, I'm sure they've dealt with the lead. At the end of the day, I'm going to drive by that building every day. So if I'm driving by and I see it going to decay, I'm going to turn around and go to town hall and say, what are we doing? Yeah. I drive by it every day. I have to take care of it. Exactly. Our response. Yeah, I just want to uh, add some information on the Adam project because um, I, I was prepared for that question, so I'm glad you brought it up. They actually built a, a police car or vehicle storage shed, as well as a fire department and an ambulance van. So it's not all town uh, town offices. And they actually, um, if we were ever to use it as a town office, USDA provides up to 30 percent of a grant for renovating an existing building. Um, they also provide you with 30 or 40 year loans. So the cost is about $60 a household for an average $250,000 house. So about $60 per year that they spend. Um, a couple of other quick things that we didn't really touch on. Uh, you did mention a little bit, Bill. I want everybody to know that the 450 is actually paid over four years. They're not holding us accountable for this coming fiscal year, so that's the 1920 year. We wouldn't pay until the following year. So it's actually 450 divided up into four years, however we want to slice and dice it. Um, so it's not a lump sum. Uh, to follow up on this is the bold's question uh, about there being no other event between the, your presentation and the vote. Is there some way for those people who couldn't come, or wouldn't come, or should have come, to see your excellent presentation? Yeah, I mean, I mean, Melissa's pointing at her video and, and whatnot. And yeah. John's video Will it be easily accessible for those people? Sure. Exactly. On the educational access. Channel 19. Channel 19. Channel 19. Put the article and put the website uh, link in it. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's, it's going to be decided by the silent majority, probably saying. Well, my observation is, is that your yeah. excellent presentation, that it would be folly yeah. not to, to pursue your line of thought. Even the cynical people who think only of money and taxes and so forth, even they should be persuaded that this is an opportunity really 
to save and gain perhaps an enormous amount of money for this town. Yeah. And to look at it from simply a short term thing would be, to use my word before, folly. I agree. Is there a way, a way for you to present this at the senior center for the seniors that aren't on Facebook or privy to your current events? I can do whatever the boss tells me. There's plenty of time between now and June 4th, so I don't see why that would be a problem. We have both newspapers here, we're videotaping it, so. You know, if the reason there's 30 days, that's why there's a difference of 30 days between this meeting and the referendum is for information to come out. I know when we did the police station on Main Street in Middletown, we went to the service organizations and, and, and did all that stuff. And it becomes a sales pitch, basically. Yes. I think it might be helpful for people um, who are concerned about the future of the town that they might be able to
Felicia. Yeah, one more quick thing to follow up on what Gloria and Katie had mentioned. I think uh, if this is not something that we would leave up to the Board of Selectmen, as Bill posted P and Z Board of Selectmen Town Meeting. But the planning process is probably the key part of this whole thing. And I foresee the Board of Selectmen setting up a, a committee to discuss this and then holding charrettes with the, uh, with the whole town. Uh, I think that's important for everybody to come and, and play around with the options that we have. Hear what we what we receive from maybe developers or other entities. So that'll definitely happen The truth is, on June 4th, there's not going to be very many voters. That's the way it happens when you have a small vote like this. So if you talk to people that you know are for it, you can easily take the school, keep the school. It's all about talking, talking to people and getting out to vote. And that's always the problem for every election. Yes. Is there any way I could get um, like bullet points and so I could photocopy it off and pay it to my customers, put flyers over at Ming's, uh, go to Da Vinci's across the way, I'll even give some to Highway, Higginham Wine Spirits, my second star, well, you know, so the, the lower end can have it from Lower Higginham, yeah. Dino's, things like that. I'll be more than happy to distribute them, even you know, down just you know, this Tylerville section and everything else like that. But if we could get to like one small little bullet point sheet, not pages, no. nobody reads pages. <laughs> you know, one sheet and that's it. That would be awesome. I could pass it around to the other businesses. Yeah, so, work on that. Yeah, so Terry, I agree here for that That's reason. Right. Because of election restriction, I just... Right, so state election laws say that once the referendum date is set, town uh, elected officials, town staff, can't take a position and, um, you know, promote a vote one way or the other. The town can produce a fact sheet. I think what we saw tonight from Bill is kind of a fact sheet. That's fine. So, yeah, that's all, I'm, just, I'm just telling you that. Yeah, we I just think want you to know. You have to know it has to be kind of a factual scenario that you can pass out and not be promoting a vote right. one way or the other. That's why I said bullet points. Okay. I didn't say, you know, that, you know, I wanted you all to say, oh, yes. No, okay. no, we just want to be clear that Bill will come no. up with something to do. Okay. People need, yeah, but but that doesn't the necessarily facts. have to be Terry. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it could be me in town. Boots on the street with flyers. Right. I mean, if it's a conflict for Terry as a business owner, I can certainly do this. No, it's not so a it's not it's so not about so town chair. I just want to be clear, whatever we come up from the town, all the information that Bill has just needs to be neutral, that's all. But there's no restriction for me to have Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Okay. You raise your own. So yep. directly to that point. Friends of ACS have been working on, on a lot of these issues for over a year. And a few of us did speak with Bill and the Biz um, Plenty and Morning Meetings. We did come up with a flyer. Um, if any of you guys want to take one on the way out, it's really closely aligned. It doesn't have the great um, green and red bubble graphic that Bill compared, but it does touch on um, a lot of those points that we've walked into. So I can take that copy Okay, if that's it, we're going to wrap it up. Right. Right. One more. So I also have one, one comment to echo what Phil says. But the Board of Education has not done us any favors in that they have thought about the restructuring about as far as the upcoming budget. And there's no fallback plan that doesn't work. There's no estimation for how to recreate the uh, space and facilities the HES provides. There's no forethought for future planning. And by us acquiring HES, it gives us the opportunity to do the jobs that they should have done and haven't. And might save us from our from a bad decision on that. I just wanted to make one more point in reference to what the town attorney said. You know, the April 11th meeting of the Board of Education was largely a discussion about, you know, it's unfair to Fillmore to not get some money out of this deal. 
and the, all the Board of Ed members there, except for one, were bending over backwards to try to get that $189,000, 42% of the $450,000, then Killingworth won it. Let's remind ourselves, I've done extensive research in April 17th of 1972, there was a referendum in both towns to, to accept or reject regionalization. In Killingworth, the vote was 370 to 81 for regionalization. That's almost 80% approval. In Haddam, it was 586 for, 568 against. It passed by 18 votes. And the question is why? It's because most people in Adam felt that the financial burdens of regionalization fell disproportionately on their shoulders. In 1972, the value of Adam's existing facilities was pegged at 2,743,000. Killingworth's school assets, 757,000 in change. That's a value difference of nearly $2 million. At the time, Killingworth had about one-third of the district's students. That has increasingly gotten bigger, and that was 42%. So, you know, you might think that, you know, the difference of $655,162 that Killingworth would pay to be fair to Adam because of the disproportionate value of the assets. Well, that didn't happen. Killingworth paid $20,753 a year for 20 years to have. That's, that amounts to about $415,000. The difference between the actual value and what Killingworth paid is $240,000. In 2019 dollars, that equates to a million four hundred and sixty thousand. So the people who had them felt back in '72 they barely passed the regionalization plan because they thought a disproportionate amount of fine, you want to talk finances was falling on half. Killingworth never paid a fair proportional amount. Let's understand that. The buses have been going north, not south. Four-fifths of the schools are in the town of Haddam. So the idea that we need to be fair to Killingworth, which is what is driving this $450,000 sale, to me is something that's born from historical ignorance of the realities of real regionalization. Now, we can't do much about that, but I think we all ought to be aware of the fact that They've been on the gravy train for since 1972. You know, and the idea that they need to charge us money when they had a deal all along strikes me as ridiculous. All right, thank you all for coming.